Right, welcome to my latest video. Today I'm going to be building the new Kobe kit. It's quite new, this one that's just come out. Junkers JU87B Stuka. Um, it has two minifigures in it, so the plane's got a crew of two. So as a result, it's going to be a little bit bigger than the other planes that I've built, like the Measure Smith and the Mustang. Okay, it's got 315 pieces, like I say, with two minifigures. And the kit code is 5521. Okay, and it's part of the small army World War II range. So their range is growing quite a lot now, what with the tanks that they bought out the tanks originally, and, and obviously the the trucks as well, but now they're, they're complementing it with with planes as well, and the World War II planes. And uh, they're going on now to bigger planes again, so they built the single-seater fighters, um, they're starting to bring out um, bombers as well, but this is sort of somewhere in between the two-seater dive bomber. Okay, right, so looking at the box, the box is really nicely done, very well printed. Um, on the back, like you have with all the, the Kobe kits, uh, well, the, the small army kits anyway, um, you get a, a nice diagram of, of the uh, the plane, you get pictures of how it looked in World War II, so you get some real photos of it. You get to see the crewmen, so they're, they're quite well printed, and they tend to be printed just on the front. And also you get the facts about the plane, so it's a Junkers JU-87B Stuka. Um, it says place of origin, which is Germany, and it was in service from 1938 to 1945, and its role was a dive bomber. So it was basically a tank buster. Um, it's cruise two. It gives, goes on about the wingspan and the armament as well, and what bombs it carried. Interestingly enough, um, these kits have the bombs underneath, and it'd be quite interesting to see how they're built. Also, with the undercarriage, so the wheels, how that's all put together, be quite interesting to see. I've had a little sneak peek at the instructions. It looks to me like it's just two pieces clipped together. Um, so that'd be quite good. So that's the box. Going on to the instructions now. Here's the instructions. As with all the Kobe kits, the instructions are really well printed. They give you instructions straight away because some of the slopes are quite similar. So they let you know that the slim learn to be careful with that. So that's always useful in building. Um, and the instructions are really good, easy to follow. Very rarely make a mistake, but you do make the odd one like you do with most things. Um, so really looking forward to building this kit. Like I say, there's two, because it's two seater, obviously you get the two seats and the bigger cockpit. So it'd be, be nice to see how that all works out. Um, the only thing I did notice that flicking through the instructions, it doesn't give you instructions on how to be, build the minifigures, but I suppose, you know, it's very easy to put together. Effectively, it's only, well, four pieces, the helmet, the head, the torso and, and the legs. And it comes with a stand as well. The stand of this looks to be the same as with all the kits with the planes. I don't think it's any wider. It doesn't look any wider. Um, so I'm going to have a go at building this.
right, so I finished the build. There it is there, the finished model. I'm going to talk about that in a minute. Um, just want to talk about the bits I had left over. Okay, so I've got about seven or eight bits left over, which I thought was quite a lot. So I went back through the instructions to make sure I hadn't missed any steps, and I haven't. So, you know, they're nice spare parts. I mean, you often get that part with the Kobe kits. So that part's for the propeller, so that's quite useful. So especially if kids are playing with it, they might drop it on its nose, break that bit. So you've got a spare bit there for them. Um, so there's all the bits left over. Uh, talk about the minifigures next. So let's see if you can see that. Yeah, that's coming up quite here. So you get two, obviously two minifigures. Um, the minifigures are just printed on the front. They're not printed on the back. Um, I'll get the other one there. So there they are there. So they're quite good, nicely printed. I like the way the uh, the flying helmets are printed. You know, you get the uh, the goggles in blue. So that stands out against the helmet, which is quite good. And the arms are printed as well. You can see there. They're quite nice minifigures. Uh, they, look, they look good when they're actually in the plane. Okay, so onto the plane itself. So there it is there. It was quite an enjoyable build. It's the same sort of build as is with the other planes. You make the uh, the nose first, the engine first, and then you make the tail section. You then put the two halves together with the, the large flat piece there, and then you make the wings. I mean, the wings were a bit different with this one, obviously because of the shape of them. So they go down and back up again. Um, for this, you we had specialist parts. So I don't know if you can see there those bits it's like a hinge without the hinge so it's a slope with a hook at each side uh, you know the studs at each side so they grip they're quite nice they work well um, I'd have preferred to have done it with hinges like you would with Lego but I suppose you know Kobe decided not to do it like that I mean it's quite solid and how it's fitted underneath are these parts here so basically you've got slide, like sliders there, you have to put that bit into position. I think it works quite well, it's, quite, it's strong. I mean the thing is with these Kobe kits, there's a lot of specialist pieces like the cockpit, um, obviously the propeller, nose cone and with this bit as well, I mean I haven't talked about it, is the landing gear. I mean the Stuka's landing gear is down all the time, so it's not like it hasn't got to retract. And all it is basically is two halves and you just snap them together. Um, you know, it would have been nice to have made it up of a few more parts to it so it's actually got like a Lego feel to it. But I mean, Kobe's Kobe. They've gone down their own route with that. I mean, it looks nice. It makes it look more authentic. Um, that's what I was going to talk about next, actually. It does look like a Stuka. I mean, the reason I got this kit is because I used to love the Stuka dive bombers when I was a, when a kid and I used to make loads of like airfit kits of them. Um, and I, you know, when they bought the kit out, I thought I've got to get that because it, you know, I, I, I love the look of the plane. And to be fair, Kobe have pulled off the look of the plane. It's in proportion, I feel anyway. Um, the nose looks very accurate. The way it is a bit lower at the front. And then you've got this um, leading up to the cockpit, which which looks just like it. You've then got the I don't know what that is. If it's a radiator or something, no, it is. It's like that on the real thing. Um, it's got four bombs and two machine, well, three machine guns. One is your rear gunner, and obviously the two then on the on the rings. Um, again, they're just two halves. The bombs are two halves that just snap together, and they just hang on the hooks there. It's quite nice how they hang on. You you put them on and then lift them to the side, um, so they're secure. And I quite like that as well. The propeller on the um, on the landing gear. Um, yeah, a good kit. It was a nice build. I mean, the thing is, you were having to duplicate everything all the time. You know, make one side of the nose, the nose, and you've got to go back then and make the other side of the nose. Um, you make one wing, and then obviously you need to make the other wing, and it does get a, a bit samey after a while. But I mean, to be fair, you know, when you get an end result like this, it's not too bad. Okay, so also, uh, you can move the flaps, which look quite good. You know, they're not flopping around. They're quite firm. 
Um, so it can, it can be posed, which is quite good. Um, again, going on with the with the you know the bits that Kobe have made that that differ from Lego parts. Obviously, you've got the the ring tips. Um, you've got the struts. There you go. If we can see that the struts in the rear rings and also what well, the tail section, sorry, and also the the landing gear at the back. So that's all. They're all sort of bits unique to Kobe. You won't find those in any Lego kits. I mean, it, I suppose it's quite hard to imagine how you would make something like this out of just standard Lego parts. So they've obviously had to to do that. You know, and to, and to be fair to them, it, it does look a good model. It is a fair, like I say, it is it's a fair representation of a Stuka, a World War II Stuka. You might have noticed there's no stickers on this yet. Um, when it comes to stickers, um, I'll show you what I mean. I take I take my time because basically, I don't know if you can see this, you might be able to see it in the light, but the stickers aren't cut flush to the sticker. Um, they are... In a, in a circle, they're in quite a large bit of clear plastic around the sticker. So when it actually comes to putting on the sticker, you get all the, like if you've got a bit of dust or something on there, it shows underneath and it doesn't look very good. So what I do, I take a little bit of time and I cut them out. So I cut flush to the, to the, um, to the icons. I cut flush around there with a scalpel. So when you peel it off, you've just got that as a shape and you put that in, obviously then if there's anything sticking around the side of it, you're not gonna see it. It's not that good, not that bad. Um, sticks themselves look quite good. There's not too many of them. Um, a bit disappointed they could have done some nice designs on the tail section, like I'm sure some of the Stukas had, um, like mosquitoes and things I, I seem to remember. I mean, not, um, so that would have been a nice um, addition, but you know, I pr appreciate you can't have everything. Um, the actual fit of the pieces together, I know Kobe sometimes suffer with the quality control. Um, I mean, they are a bit gappy at the front and in the tail section. I don't know if you can see the see that. Um, but to be honest, it has it has improved. I, I think personally, the build quality has uh, the uh, the build quality has improved. The bits actually fit a bit more snugly together. I haven't got any loose loose tiles like I've had before so you know you're forever pushing them back down and pushing them back on to try and get them to fit, you know fit snugly um, the actual wing piece underneath the, the fuselage is only hold on literally by about four or five studs which I was a bit concerned about but it fits fine it's solid it doesn't rattle about so again that's turned out okay um, the stand Stand is the same size as all the other stands. I thought as it was actually going to be a bigger model, you would get a bigger stand, but you don't. You get this, the standard Kobe stand. Um, fits it well, easy to fit, and then it makes a nice display feature. Well, I like to talk about the size of, of, of the aircraft. Like I said at the beginning of the video, it was a, they had a crew of two, so obviously it's gonna be bigger than a single seat fighter. Um, and I was keen to see what sort of scale it would be, because I know Kobe sometimes suffer with their scale, especially with the tanks. But to be fair to them, when you see the single seater measure Smith next to it, so if I can widen the shot a little bit. It's not bad, it, you know, it looks right. And if it looks right, that's fine by me. I mean, I thought it was, look, just looking at the box, you know, graphic on the box, I thought it, it might be huge compared to, to one of these. But as you can see, it's, it's about right, I would say. Ring span is about the same. Well, let's see if I can get that in shot. It's a little bit, a little bit longer as it should be. Um, let's get this one out of the way. Yeah, so uh, I've enjoyed making it. Like I said, I've got four of these now. Um, and this was the one I really wanted. As soon as it was announced, it was, like I said, as a kid, it was the Stuka kits that I made. So I was keen to get a hold of it. Um, 
just a quick mention about how the tail section goes back and it tapers off. Basically you get these, these pieces for the nose um, and they're like curved and you've got a gully in between that you put a, let's see if that's in short, it wasn't in short. Right, so you get these curved pieces here and you get like a gully which you put a, a flat tile on, okay? So that's what they've done with the back as well. And I was concerned, is that in short? Yeah, I was concerned that the sort of tail would just chisel off at the back and look odd. But what they've done, how they've incorporated it, is with the slanting tiles underneath. So it actually gives it a quite a nice tapered effect. So I thought it would be obvious that it's 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 trying to taper off and look really bad and really clunky um, and poorly executed. But I actually, upon building it, because it actually tapers in from the rings as well underneath, it's quite a nice little bit of design and it doesn't look odd. I mean, as you can see with this one here, just make sure it's in shot. Um, what they do here, it tapers from the cockpit at the back, so you get this like beveled. Uh, bit at an angle there so it, it stays like two two studs wide at the top and it goes to about three down here and actually the fighter planes look quite good and obviously they couldn't do that with the with the Stuka as well because the Stuka at the back of it's different um, but I think it's quite nice what they've done.